Now let's go over the four main pages you'll use over the course of your REDCap project. While your project is in development, your landing page will be the project setup page. When you're in production, your landing page will be the project home page. This has quick links to a lot of back-end tasks, such as exporting data, running reports, and managing users. The other functionality has a lot of useful features that you might use over the course of your REDCap project. For example, you can use this page to make a copy of your project. This makes an exact duplicate of the project, pulling over even things like users and project records if you want to. You can use this if you're making a second project that's very similar to your first project, so that instead of rewriting the project, you only have to make small modifications. You can also use this to test out large changes in the project to see how they'd affect your data or just what the look would be like before you make them to your main project database. You can download a backup of the project as an XML file, including metadata, which is all about the project setup in the data dictionary, or metadata and actual data. You can also use these XML files when you're creating REDCap projects. So for instance, if you're transferring a project from Children's to UCD, you could download the XML file from Children's and upload it on UCD with all the project setup intact. Under Project Management, you have three options. You can delete the project completely, you can erase all the data in the project, including the documents uploaded, survey responses, and the logging events to the data. Or you can archive the project. This just moves the project off of your list of My Projects so that it's no longer cluttering up the page. When your project's in production, you'll also have the option to move the project to an active status. Here, you can still run reports and export data, but you'll no longer be able to enter new data into the project. The project revision history largely takes effect once your project is in production mode. Every time you make a change to your project in production mode, REDCap will automatically save a copy of the previous data dictionary. This way, if you decide that you no longer want the changes that you made, you can easily backtrack. You can also create a snapshot of the project that will be stored here when you're in development mode. In the online designer, which I'll show you later, there's a button that lets you create a snapshot of the instruments. Now, if I look at the project revision history, that snapshot has been saved here. So if I'm making large changes while in development, it has saved a copy of the data dictionary so that I can always backtrack in case I overwrite something I actually wanted. Finally, we have the project setup page. This is the main landing page while the project is still in development. In the main project settings box, you can enable surveys or longitudinal data collection within the project. You can also change the project title and purpose and add any additional project notes like we talked about when you're creating the project. Next, you have the option to design your data collection instruments. We'll come back to this in a little bit. Optional modules and customizations are exactly that, some additional features that you can use while you're in REDCap. For example, by default, all records are auto-numbered, meaning REDCap will just assign each record 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, unless you turn it off and tell it you want to number your records manually. You can also turn on repeatable instruments here. You can set a custom record label. By default, the record label is just the record ID. But here I'm pulling, I'm piping in information. In any record where the participant has supplied the first and last name, I'm piping the information from that field into the record label so I can easily identify my participants. If you want to have more than one unique field, you can define that here, or you can order records by a field other than the record ID. By default, the field comment log and the data history widget will be enabled. This allows you to better manage the data in your project. You can also display a Today Now button next to all date time fields. There are a lot of options here, so play around with it and see what works best for your project. Project bookmarks are just about what they sound like. It is just a quick bookmark that will be stored on the left-hand menu, allowing you to jump to pages either inside or outside of the project. User rights are how you add and manage the users on your project. 
To add a new user, you enter their REDCap username here. If you don't know it, you can search for them, but you need to make sure it's the REDCap name that shows up here. Then add with custom rights. Your first option here is to choose how long they have access to your project. You can set an expiration date after which they will no longer be able to access it. The next three privileges listed, Project Design Setup, User Rights, and Data Access Groups, are rights that you should only give to people who have completed a full tutorial and who actually need those rights within your project. Project Design and Setup allows people to modify the data dictionary and the general setup of the project. User Rights is the ability to add and remove users from the project and to change what individual users can do within the project. Data Access Groups are similar to User Rights but on a group level. We'll go over those in a few minutes. After that, you'll define what rights this user has for exporting. You can choose that they have no right to export documents, or they have a full data set. The two options in between are de-identified and removed all tagged identifier fields. De-identified is the default that Vanderbilt puts in. This means that it removes everything you've tagged as an identifier field, all freeform text fields, and all date time fields that get exported will be date shifted. Remove all tagged identifier fields will simply remove the fields that you have tagged as an identifier. Other privileges are simply the ability to use some other applications in REDCap, such as a calendar tool, the ability to import data en masse, the ability to look at the file log, or to access things that might have been stored in the file repository. The REDCap mobile app is a completely separate application. It does not mean using REDCap on a cell phone or a tablet. It is a separate app that's designed for offline data collection for people who have to do data collection in an area where they won't have a steady internet connection. It allows them to connect data offline and then sync it when they get back to an internet connection. It will give users the ability to create and potentially rename and delete records and say whether or not they can lock and unlock records. If a record is locked, none of the information in it can be changed. Finally, you can choose the data entry rights on each individual form in your project. You can say that someone can't access a form at all, that they can only read it, or that they can read and edit. When you're done, you just click Add User. If you have many people in your project who are all going to be doing similar things, you can create a role instead of just adding them individually. For example, you might create a data entry role that has a specific set of rights. After you've created the role, then instead of having to add each person individually and check off all the boxes, you can simply assign them to that role and everyone in that role has the same rights on the project. Data access groups are something that are largely used on multi-site projects. With data access groups, you create a number of different groups, for example, Site 1, Site 2, Site 3, and assign users to a specific site. Once assigned, they will only be able to see the data that they themselves enter or that other people at their site enters. They will not be able to see the information for any other site. This is just one more way for you to help manage how much data in your project people can access. After you've set up your forms, customized your project, and added all your users, it's important to test your project. Add practice records to your project. Make sure that the data entry runs smoothly. If you're using surveys, send out practice surveys to yourself or to your colleagues. If you're using a longitudinal project, make sure that you've tried doing data entry in all or at least many different events. If you're working with other people on your project, it's often a good idea to have them test it as well. For example, if you're working with a statistician, have them take a look ahead of time. They might be able to tell you if there's anything that will be a problem for them when they go to run your data. If you are working with data entry people, have them try to enter a couple of records as well and make sure that the project flows smoothly for them. Once you've tested your project thoroughly and are ready to move to production, you'll click on this Move to Production button. Here you get the option to keep any data you've entered so far, or you can delete it out if it was simply test records that you don't need. Once you hit the Yes, Move to Production Status button, REDCap will send an email to the administrators. We will go into your project and download the data dictionary and run a quick check on it. We're looking for items like, are all the identifiers marked as identifiers, and have you validated all the text fields that need to be validated? If we have any questions, we'll check with you. 
Otherwise, once we've run our checks, we'll send you a quick form to move to production. This is where we'll ask you to provide the IRB number for the project. Once we have the form, we'll move your project to production and you'll be ready to begin collecting real data.